In this video, we're going to talk about the energy that is stored in a capacitor. So let's begin. When a capacitor is connected to a power supply, the supply does work on the electrons so that their potential energy increases. And this energy is then released when the capacitor is discharged. So, so this you might have already learned about if you knew the basics of how a capacitor works. And for that, I highly recommend looking at my previous video on capacitors. So let's say that you have connected your capacitor, which is uncharged, to a power supply. At first, there is only a small amount of negative charge on the plate. So imagine this. You have your uncharged capacitor and you connect it to a cell. One part, such as short stick, would be negative. The longer stick would be positive. At first, this has no um, positive or negative charge. It all adds up to zero coulombs. However, once you start connecting it, then the electrons will move from the negative terminal in there. Now, as you put more and more electrons in there, this is what it would look like. There are many electrons or negative charges here. There are many positive charges over here. It's much more concentrated. And so this means that the repulsion will increase. When a new electron comes in, the repulsive force of the um, electrons, the electrostatic repulsive force, is going to increase the more electrons you put in there. And therefore, more and more work has to be done each time you want to add an additional negative charge onto a plate. And so this is why we say that there is like an increasing rate of energy supply in order to charge up a capacitor. And this is what the graph would look like. This graph right here, it shows you that as you go on to higher and higher voltages, you need more and more energy that is stored. And so we can see that um, the potential difference slash volts increases as the amount of charge increases. So we can see that if you put more charge, then a bigger potential difference is required in order to put that charge in there. And we know that the, well, the voltage is basically the potential energy per coulomb. So in order to get to energy, we're supposed to get, multiply this by the number of charge, and then we can get the energy. In that same way, if it's not a straight line like this, in which you can just like multiply V times Q and then get the answer, which is E, um, when you have something like this, where it's a triangle, then you could obviously get the area under the curve in order to get the energy that is supplied by the capacitor. Now, obviously, this is also equivalent to the amount of um, energy that is supplied and also charged and held by the capacitor, not only supplied. And so this is the exact same energy that will be released or discharged when the capacitor is basically connected to anything other than a cell that keeps on adding electrons. So for this, obviously, it would just be half VQ because that is a triangle. Now, if you had like a graph that was like this, then you would have to integrate this graph and you would get the area under it in that way. So this is obviously something that doesn't increase. So even if you put more and more charge through something, the voltage is the same. This tells us that this is not a capacitor. This is something called a resistor because resistors don't store charge. They don't hold it. They just allow the charge to flow directly through. And therefore, they don't have this like buildup of more and more work being required as the electrons keep getting added. And that's why we have the difference between the graph of a, a capacitor and the graph of a re uh, resistor because this is to drive a charge through a resistor and there's no buildup of this work. So basically it's just a straight line parallel to the x-axis and that would be a resistor. That would be also the energy required to move the charge Q through a potential difference volt and this is for a resistor. Yeah, and the area under a graph of potential difference against charge is equal to the work done as we have already covered. So for a capacitor, we have this equation. And usually for capacitors, it would be this sort of graph 
where it is directly proportional and therefore the area under it would be the triangle and as we said the triangle would be one out of two qv's and that is what's right here so q which is the charge is equal to capacitance times voltage because as we looked at in the previous video the capacitance is basically the charge per voltage and so that's where we get that from now we can substitute the q into this equation and then we can get work done is half cv squared or work done is half q squared out of c so this is basically very easy you don't really need to memorize it and you can just derive it in an exam most importantly we have these two equations and these two equations are required in order to give you all of these that could be used in certain questions so we can see that the energy depends on the capacitance and the potential difference and the work done is actually directly proportional to the voltage squared and so this basically tells us that doubling the voltage will could quadruple the work done. So this is a slightly experimental physics sort of thing. If you wanted to actually investigate the relationship between the capacitance, the voltage, and the work done, you could actually work with this sort of circuit. So what we see here is it's essentially the voltage supply connected to a capacitor, right? However, we also decided to measure the um, voltage of the capacitor or potential difference of the capacitor by connecting a voltmeter here. And then we have one joule meter, but this is not connected to the capacitor at this moment. So basically, firstly, you just have to charge up the capacitor. The capacitor is charged up when the switch connects it to the power supply. So allow us to imagine that this is connected. Then the you know, the electrons will start flowing, they will keep flowing until the potential difference across the capacitor is equal to the potential difference slash the electromotive force of the voltage supply. And that will tell us what is the voltage. Now, when the switch is altered and, you know, after they stop flowing and when it's equal, then we can basically alter the switch. We can take it away from here. We could put it and connect it in here which means that there's this, this part of the circuit is no longer going to be connected and there's not going to be any relation anymore. What we do now is that the, the energy that the capacitor is holding will start discharging across this circuit. And as it flows through the joule meter, the joule meter will tell us the work done. And so that is the way that we can see you know, the relationship between the capacitance and the work done and the volts, etc. So we know that the work done is 1 out of 2 CV. And so oh, QV, which is the charge, right? And basically, we can tell that the Q is going to be work divided by V times 2. And so that we can derive simply from this relationship now that we have the amount of charge we can even get the capacitance because the capacitance is the charge per volt so you know this is a simple circuit that if you know two of the values in this then you can basically get a lot of other values in relation to it now what is important is that you wait for the capacitor to completely discharge so that the joule meter can get the complete amount of energy that was stored by the capacitor we can vary the capacitance as well as the PD to investigate how the work done or slash the energy stored depends on these two variables. So that is about it for this video on the energy stored in a capacitor. It's very fundamental to understanding how um, capacitors function in general and how they hold energy and the different ways to think about it. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped in any way. If it did, you can check out my other videos that I have also posted on capacitance as well as my channel in general because I post physics videos of similar level. Um, thank you so much for watching.